All right, Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today here on YouTube. We're talking about our top 10 players. And yeah, it's a Saturday release. We're back to three shows a week. Tune in, subscribe, click the bell, listen up. It's going to be a great show. Stay tuned. It's been said that the foolish man built his house upon the sand and the wise man built his house upon the rock. Well, the wise fantasy football player builds their house upon the ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers. Full projections, video profiles, tier breakdowns, risk ratings, while you watch other teams comically topple over like a clown with poor balance. Your foundation for an incredible season will be solidified. You are the mighty Redwood. Your opponents are one-ply toilet paper. You are iron alloyed with carbon. Your opponents are a soggy leaf of lettuce. Go to www.ultimatedraftkit.com and get out of the sand today. Hi, this is Dan, a.k.a. the Brian Ketron of the 2018 Listener League, and you are listening to the award-winning Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. Mike is here. I'm here. We're doing kind of like a slow motion run, jog into the studio. Jason is present, accounted for. I'm half here. Where's your other half? I'm 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 here with you, Mike. I can look to the uh, right. Yes. yes. I just can't look at Andy. It is Saturday. I'm here with two geriatric. July 6th. Old men that just get hurt and can't use their necks anymore. They look like the, you got the old Batman suit on. How, how are you doing from your stomach bug over the weekend, Mike? I'm Ooh. getting better, man. I'm on the antibiotics. I'm good. <laughs> Hold on. Let me look on, over what to the crutch. right. What a crutch. With the antibiotics? Yeah. If antibiotics fixed your neck, you would have been on I'd them be on them ago. right now. <laughs> Inject it right in my neck. Um, yes, in an improbable fashion. Somehow, uh, two thirds of the show threw out their neck over the holiday weekend. The left side of their neck, doing yes. totally different things. No, I plan on not engaging with the audience on the camera directly to my left at all today. You will see. I'll, that. I will look for you. Jason's in good shape. He's already staring at the camera. We have a great <laughs> show for you today. And yeah, Jason won't be looking at us. We have a great quick question. We're going to talk about some Colts players and their average draft position. We've got a top 10 countdown today on the show going to roll uh, roll through our top 10. You guys That's usually what a top 10 engage, does. Excited for that? It's so a top 10 countdown starting at 43. Yeah, we're going to pick 10 separate players in our top 43. That's a top 10 countdown. Well, we have a we always have a lot of questions like at the back of the first round, should I take the best wide receiver or one of these running backs and you might you might get that answered today. You might. Dare I say you will. We've got a lot going on. We've got the live show in San Francisco, July 11th. If you are interested in coming to that, you can go to ballerslive.com. We have a giveaway for listeners right yeah. now at footclangiveaway.com. I've heard from multiple people that we let down the Foot Clan hugely because the podcast awards are coming, but there was no official call, so I need to hear oh, it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Foot Clan Assemble. Assemble! Thank you very much. Believe it or not, they demanded the official call. They said they will not vote for us oh. until the official call comes forward. Look, I... In the podcast awards. I am sorry. I yeah, am it was sorry a to our, our incredibly beautiful, handsome, generous... You know what the truth is? I don't... like. I, listeners. I feel like they do too much for us. So I never want to ask for more. Right. So like going for the four Pete, I just feel like maybe the call was too much. So I didn't want to force it, but they want the call. They <laughs> want to do more. You're incorrect. We did this way wrong. We we're, we're downplaying the four Pete. We're trying to be cool. 
We got we got to get that four piece. Yeah, let's go ahead and win that. But if you go to FootClanGiveaway.com, if one f- of the ways that you can enter to win a signed Patrick Mahomes jersey is to support the show, vote for us at the Podcast Awards. There's a bunch of other ways. Follow us on Instagram, stuff like that. But we're giving away the the most alluring oh, prize goodness. of all time, the signed Pat Mahomes jersey, courtesy of PristineAuction.com. Twitter, you can find us at the FF Ballers. Here's your quick question. Which Colts player are you most likely to draft at their current average draft position in a half point per reception league? Here are the Colts players and where they're going while you guys ponder. There's a lot while of While you noodle this. T.Y. Hilton, 212. Marlon Mack is going one pick later at 301. Andrew Luck is going as the third pick of the fifth round. Eric Ebron, the 11th pick of the sixth round. And then you get down into the deep uh, doldrums of the draft. <laughs> you drop from the sixth round to the 12th. Yeah, Devin Funches, nice. 1202. Naeem Hines, 1303. Paris Campbell, 1308. Jack Doyle, 1311. Who are you most likely to end up with on your team if you have to pick one out of those players? If I got to pick one out of that crew, it's – T.Y. Hilton, right now my number seven wide receiver in half point to get that kind of a value at the back of the second. So I mean, meaning, you know, I've 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 got Saquon, I've got I've got an elite elite running back, and then I get a guy who's a, he's a top ten wide receiver, has top five ability. I think that's absolutely sensational. Are you comfortable with him as your one? Yes. Okay. So that's the thing about T.Y. versus the guy that I will probably end up with more in drafts from the Colts, which is Marlon Mack, is because they're in that early third round, you're talking about, well, what what were your first two picks? Did you go running back, running back, in which case, you know, T.Y. might be your one, or did you go running back, wide receiver? I tend to, and of course, we never lock ourselves into a positional position than position, but more often than not, lately, I've been going running back, then wide receiver, and if I can add Marlon Mack as my running back two to a stud running back and wide receiver, I'm all about that life. I'm going to go with Naeem Hines at 1303, a.k.a. free in my drafts. Yeah. Naeem Hines, at the end of last season, three of the last five games had seven or more receptions, heavily targeted by Andrew Luck. He is my, in case of emergency, break the glass, I can start him, any week and hope it's a high reception total week. But when you look at him and people want to talk about the value of getting an Austin Eckler, a rotational backfield piece later, I see a lot of similarities between the value of Hines and Eckler, only you don't pay for Hines. Hines is basically free. Uh, he's going to be heavily targeted, caught more receptions than Eckler did, just didn't get in the end zone the way Eckler did. Eckler had those burst weeks because he kept showing up in the you know big play. Yeah. Uh, Hines, I think, had two touchdowns on the year, and they both came in the same game uh, in the receiving game. So it just didn't happen in that regard to him. Very talented. We know Mac's not going to catch a lot of passes. I think Hines is the guy that I'll take the free shot at him. I can't disagree with the value on Hilton. So I just didn't want to go double up on Hilton. Right. So, Mike, I'm surprised you didn't bring up Jack Doyle. I maybe, was as well. Maybe I mean, you just don't draft him. No, I, I like Jack Doyle, I mean, he's in that free category as well. I'm just so madly in love with with Hilton for this year. I didn't want people to think, well, you know, they're just trying to take the late values. No, T.Y. Hilton at the back of the second is fantastic. My dynasty team thanks you, Mike. You are very welcome. I appreciate all puff pieces about my dynasty players, all the hype I accept. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Well, the Raiders. Some news out of Raiders camp ahead of so bizarre. Ahead of hard knocks, running back Josh Jacobs remains un, unsigned, and negotiations have not been going well. Going well. This is uh, via Twitter. There's a growing belief that Jacobs will not be there at the start of camp. That's this is over signing bonus distribution. This is rare to see for first round draft picks anymore. Yeah, I mean it really only happens when there's some kind of organizational dysfunction because No. Uh, yeah. So I mean I you would expect him in. I will say this, you know, we I've been joking recently about Josh Jacobs is one of those guys that's gonna really get pumped up through hard knocks and then, you know, maybe maybe his value in the draft isn't there. Yeah, maybe maybe you could skip a couple episodes and get back in. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a weird situation because the Do only you, thing you can even debate right now is like the payment schedule and when you get your money. All the contract values, all the bonuses, they're all predetermined. Which is so strange. The only wiggle room is with that like, you know, uh, payment schedule, when ga salary guarantees have offsets and stuff like that. Maybe he's a, like a tax genius, and he he's trying to schedule it perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and say it's the agent who's saying they need uh, something. But does a lot of scare... leverage with no running backs behind <laughs> him, pretty does, much. Does this scare either of you two right now? Like, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. But this is one of those, you better put a little flag to check in on Josh Jacobs, how he's doing. Through. If he's missing, if he misses two weeks of training camp, that's, heading, that's heading a problem. Into the preseason, then I'm going to start because getting a little worried. Someone like Gruden, yeah, he's vindictive. Yeah, and if you've made an effort, if you're if you're not complying with team philosophy, Krampus, you're up. He's the kind of guy that says, <laughs> you know what? Sure, we'd love to have you out there, but you're going to sit and watch because you wanted to make this decision. It's just the way some coaches are. Right, might not be the best thing for the on the field product. Probably pretty stupid if you've signed in or paying a player, but it's what happens to teach a lesson. Uh, Paul Perkins. Smash yes. Jackson. Yes. The return of Smash Jackson. He ran with the second team offense. Of in, course he did. In Giants camp and at offseason. I'm sorry, not Giants camp. Uh, at offseason workouts. Recovered from a year-long injury. It's only a matter of time. Smash Jackson. In a world. Is back on the field. Smash Jackson is the backup to Saquon. He is the handcuff to Saquon, and I believe if he gets the opportunity, is irrelevant. I just <laughs> don't think... Hold on. So you're more... It's so, more Paul Perkins. So I mean, Yes, it's Paul Perkins. Spencer Jackson is RIP. But for Dynasty purposes, are you going to stash the smash? <laughs> Look, if I've got a 30-person 30, 30 roster and I've got Saquon, sure, I will stash the smash. I mean, people were... were they're, they're stolen with Gallman, right? Right. Uh, I'd rather huh. stash the smash. Uh -huh. Quick sure. cash. I'd rather not <laughs> touch the non Saquon. <laughs> That's how I feel about the Giants' offense. I love it when there are hot debates over backups on a bad offense. I mean, oh, can you imagine that offense? If Saquon Barkley's the missed time, that oh, offense. Gross. Oh, New York. He was to counterpoint the 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 kind of like Saquon was so good last year. Yes. Not just a little good. Like so you look at the the, the eight man fronts he faced, you look at the total rushing attempts the team had, they were so bad and he was so good. So we're gonna be talking about Saquon. Are we? Maybe. Well, I guess if we're starting he in might the forties. He's in our top ten. Yeah, he's in our top ten. All right, one more piece of news. According to the athletic, John Ross is quote hoping to reinvent himself this year. Mm, gonna Ross, need to. Ross is even changing numbers, maybe so he hopes we as fantasy owners don't recognize him. Uh, I kind of wanted to basically start everything over, said Ross. It's a good, it's a good plan. Is, I, it, is the, it a good plan when the only thing you had was speed? Are you reinventing yourself as not just a fast player? Uh, no, I mean, I think he's trying to reinvent himself as a person. Like, try to, you know, get over whatever hiccups have been there. Um, I mean, obviously he's not saying, I want to be a 50-50 ball a slow, methodical Just player. New approach, new head coach. Yeah, he's got the opportunity. Oof, nice and, rhyme. And he's, and he's going to need to. So, you know, when he said, I, I kind of want to basically start everything over, the reporter responded with, duh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not been good for John Ross. I think the ship has probably sailed, mostly because the opportunity is just not really there. I mean, Joe Mixon, Tyler Boyd, A.J. Green, they'll all catch more passes than John Ross will. Tyler Eifert might. You know, Gio Bernard might. No, I mean, we did, it's statistically just, speaking, when it's been this long for guys like Ross, Josh Doxson, it's Rashad Perryman. It's just not going to happen. All right. With fantasy football gearing up, now is the time to ask your commission if you're using the right platform. You should use Sleeper. Very nice, Mike. Thank you. All right. You guys want to get into our top 10, or did you have anything you wanted to bring to the table before we? Well, we, before we jump into a top ten, I wouldn't rum, wouldn't. Uh, I would like to. <laughs> I couldn't find the right word no, but to, to fix I with just, my tense problem. I would just keep trying. When to I was talk, though. man, did you guys ever have the the writing in intense problem? Writing intense, like as in as in using like past camping? tense. Pa <laughs> <laughs> nice, <laughs> like past tense, present tense, and just in you couldn't handle it. No, there was there was a time in my life where I just I kept 
using the wrong ones, mm. and it would be jumping back and forth. And the was English, that a tough time for you? Oh, the English teacher was not having that. Mm. But you know what they would be having? <laughs> fantasy <laughs> gear from fantasychamps.com. Your, your <laughs> fantasy paraphernalia. If you're a winner. Paraphernalia. Unlike, what, what else would you call it? No, I did. Sure. Trophies? Well, now, now I'm really self-conscious. Rings. Rings? Look. If you win, you got to go to fantasychamps.com. If you're doing a live draft and you want to have that board, Fantasy Champs has you covered there as well. All kinds of cool stuff, hardware, gear, and yes, paraphernalia. No, you, you're right. Use, use the code BALLERS. You're going to save some money. Not just if you win, but if you won. Sure. I'm helping you out there, yes, Mike, thank with you. the tents. I really appreciate My English teacher appreciates oh, that. Man. Here for you. If you didn't notice, it's Saturday, and there's a new BALLERS episode. We are... Three times a week now in July. We're up to th five episodes a week starting in August. And really, that's six. If you're a member of the Foot Clan and join the foot.com, which I do encourage you to check out. Um, but man, it's go time. We're ready to rumble. Let's get into it. Number 10. All right. Number 10 on the list running back Todd Gurley from the Los Angeles Rams. We never would have imagined. Number one. Overall fantasy player last year, besides Patrick Mahomes, but number one running back. Yes, and if you go back again to 2017, he was the number one running back. Mm. He's obviously been an, a complete monster for fantasy <sighs> owners. Uh, in 2018, 10th most PPR points per game for running backs in NFL history. Uh, his average draft position right now is the middle of the second round out of fear. His UDK risk rating in our ultimate draft kit at ultimatedraftkit.com is a 6 that's, out of 10. That's very high. Which is high for a guy you would draft in the first or second round or yeah. feel confident. But yet, 17 touchdowns on the ground in 14 games. Another 4 through the air on 81 targets. Uh, we, at, at what point will the pendulum swing too far on Gurley? Or is this completely wait and see in your mind? Because I'm wondering... Uh, I start He's getting to the point where I'm going, man, a highly efficient less volume Todd Gurley might be more valuable than the 205. Yeah, I mean the, that is 100% true when I when I made my rankings, I he doesn't have the volume that he's had in the past. He he just does, you know, he's not going to get that you could see with what the the transactions that the team has made that they plan to lighten his workload and not just the transactions they made, but you you've got a little bit of evidence from when he came back from injury and how he was used alongside CJ Anderson. So there's plenty of reasons to be scared, but even still, even still when you know when I've got Gurley just barely over two hundred rushing carries, he's still my running back eight. Rushing carries, is that what you're laughing at? Well, I don't think I've heard that before. Yeah. Well no no no. They were like they're not Australian carries. Yeah, no, I was gonna make that joke too. <laughs> Yeah, they're in the uh, <laughs> very European. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but he doesn't need the volume to be great. That being said, I do think that in the middle of the second where you're drafting him in a lot of these drafts, I feel like that, and, and this will sound a little weird because he was the number one last year and the number one before, I feel like you're basically drafting him at his ceiling. And that's not to say that he can't hit that. But that's kind of what I think with this level of volume that I expect. I I think I would probably not take it that far. Now, I, I wanted to ask the question, how's, what's the earliest you individually would take early? For me, it's the back of the first round. I would be willing in the right circumstance to do that. I look at players like Alvin Kamara, and I say, without massive workload, they're top five backs. So to me, the ceiling for... Gurley has to be the top five. Yeah, I, I think that he can still hit that. The, the The downside for Gurley is... Yeah, how does it go wrong? Week two, in between week one and week two, his knee swells up again, and he's just sitting on the sideline for an indefinite amount of time. You, It's it's arthritis. You have no idea it, when... When, when he needs a break. When he needs a break, when it's going to calm down. This isn't a... A broken clavicle. Okay, four to six weeks. Todd Gurley's back and he's it's full strength. It's it's your Tony knee. Romo just shuddered somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a few extra. He's, he's, uh, who who said what? Huh? Bring him another one. Uh, but it, like you don't know when or if the problem's actually going to strike again. I mean, I 
Look, I'm posing this question to you guys. You're old. You're geriatric. Yeah. Right. You right. both have yes. to know a thing or two about arthritis. Yes. yes. When's it going to happen? All I know is – I'd be out right now. <laughs> all I know is I'm not playing quality football with my arthritis or with my neck. And and while may, so maybe Gurley's upside is in the top five, still not at that you know eighth running back spot. But my point is, I think that the days of his dominant number one, that's just done. That's it's gone. Done. And because mm-hmm. he carries so much weight, to answer your question, Andy, where would I draft him? He's one of those guys that I feel like he's pretty much off my board because I would consider it in the you three hundred one in the third round. I would consider him there, but but the reality is he probably won't make it to that spot but when I go down through the average draft list and I think you know okay right now guys that are going even behind him you know uh Dalvin Cook I'll take Dalvin Cook over Todd Gurley that's that's Nick kind of Chubb Nick Chubb I would go Gurley because I I think Chubb has his Marlon own problems Mack. to deal with Gurley come yeah. on Leonard Fournette okay Gurley. so that's I about where would, Gurley is I think is. you that's, would take Gurley where his sure. ADP is if you have Gurley let's say you get him at 205 you just draft him there do you spend seven oh five on Daryl Henderson? Do yes. you spend seven oh one on Daryl Henderson? I do, because you want to ensure that you don't have catastrophic loss of your second round pick. Exactly. I, I don't normally like to go after the handcuff. I'm not drafting Paul Perkins anywhere because you don't. It's hard to be a hundred percent certain who the who the handcuff actually is, and and will that handcuff get the type of work you're expecting? Things are very fluid over the season. But you know, it, actually, you know what? I, we can't even say for, with 100% that it's Daryl Henderson. Nope. But you can say, you can follow what the coaches did or the, the management team of spending a very high draft capital moving up to get him. It would seem that he would come in and be the, the, Watch the, him the heavy side. Watch him closely yes. in camp in preseason. Henderson flashing in camp or preseason, getting the praise of coaches means a lot towards ensuring your handcuff situation. Because if he's the guy, he's not a handcuff. He's a, oh, he's a handcuff. I don't think he will. I went both sides. <laughs> I there. saw both yeah. sides. I was stereo, impressed. stereo. I don't think he would come in and get Gurley's workload. What I'm still expecting him to get, it would be him and Malcolm Brown. But Daryl Henderson would be on the the side that you want. All right, number. Well, I got a button for that. <laughs> Number nine, David I was, Johnson. I was really hoping you would. All right, number nine. Number That's nine. That's right. Redundant. Uh, David Johnson. Does he deserve? Yes. To be praised. Yeah. Yes. It. It was tough sledding if you had David Johnson last year because you took him at number two. His ADP is at one hundred five right now. He is not being drafted as a cheap pick after last year's disappointment when he finished as a running back 10. So he's being drafted assuming the Cardinals are going to score more than just the least in the league. The offense is going to play at a quicker pace of pay, and David Johnson has been good. I think that fantasy players are smart. They're just right. 2015, he was number eight. 2016, number one. Missed the season in 2017 with the injury. Last season, number 10 overall. He's the workhorse. 258 carries last year, 50 receptions on the worst possible offense. You saw his numbers go up everywhere across the board. Once once Mike McCoy was fired, he went from 8.3 yards of reception to 9.3. His yards per carry went from 3.16 up to almost 4. His attempts per game went up from 15 to 17. So you saw a, a marked improvement once Mike McCoy and his horrifically bad 1952 offense was sent packing. The problem, the big problem for David Johnson last year in 2018, 15 attempts in the 10 zone. You need a running back to get carries there, make their money. In his huge year in 2016, that number was 33. More than double the attempts inside the 10 than he had last year. He's the pass catching back if and honestly, to me, he was PFF's number one pass catcher in football in right. 2016. If you are fading David Johnson this year, you better be fading Saquon Barkley. Because, look, I'm not saying he's better. Barkley is the better raw athlete and running back at this point, but it's nearly identical situations. Lead dog, pass catching running back for a what could be a pretty bad offense. How does it go? wrong for David Johnson this year. There's a lot of hype around Cliff Kingsbury. It almost feels like the longer 
we sit with the information about Kyler running the offense and play, total plays, and the longer we sit with it, all the ADPs are just trickling up for David Johnson yeah. and Christian Kirk and Larry Kyler. Fitzgerald and Kyler. So it's almost like you, you need to see – you need to let the bull out of the pen to see what the heck happens. How does it go wrong? What is the – Narrative for another disappointing year for David Johnson if he's being drafted at 105. That's pretty easy. How it goes wrong is the air raid system and the excitement over Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray coming to the NFL just flat fails. It doesn't translate with these hash marks. The offense sputters. They're not that good. The offensive line is bad. So, I mean, if, if the whole offense collapse and the experiment going on in the desert right now is a failure – then David Johnson will not return on the 105 pick overall. He will still be, barring injury, you know, a top 15 back. He was a top 10 back last year. But you're not going to feel good spending the fifth pick because there's going to be guys who went six or seven or eight who were, you know, top players. But I just, you know, look, we're here. We get to see a lot. Right. And, and let me be clear, just to follow up my point, I am not fading Saquon and I'm not fading – DJ because you're just saying if you fade one you need to fade yeah. the other because of because it's very similar circumstances do you put David Johnson now we have him at nine in our top 10 do you put him in the category of players that are capable of finishing one overall this season oh yes Jason says yes I mean yeah I, I, w- I would say he's in the cat it doesn't mean that's obviously not if right. we were projecting that he'd be number one on the list but He's in that category, yes. All right. Number eight. Number eight on the top ten list today, Devontae Adams, wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. His average draft position is right here at 108. His risk rating is low because this guy gets targeted over and over and over again. And then in the offseason, Aaron Rodgers comes out and says, you know what, I'd like to throw him the ball some more. He's more open than even I could have thrown him the ball. Last year, 111 receptions, 13 touchdowns, 169 targets, which is unbelievable. We've we've listened to Matt Harmon uh, talk about Devontae Adams. If you look at the ultimate draft kit and the reception perception profile, there has been no player who has improved more than Devontae Adams over the course of his career. So we know he's a bona fide stud. Last year, number three overall at the position. How does it go right? How does it go wrong for Devontae Adams? What do you guys want to talk well, about? One, that? I would like to say that the fact that he's this low is I take no fault of this. This is everyone else. It is not me. I like Devontae Adams more than being being this low in the I would say in that the list. We then pulled it to ADP, like the average, right? Because uh, that's where he's going. He's going right now. So you're you're higher than average, which is fine. So you, why don't you tell us how it goes right? It goes right that uh, you see what happened to him last year, where he had a, a, it was it was a breakout season for Adams, where he took the leap of you know that he's going to be great because he's evolving into a, a good wide receiver and he's Aaron Rodgers number one. But then he really came through. It, this was his first year over a thousand yards. Am I remembering that correctly? That is correct. And, I yes, you absolutely are remembering that correctly because I loved. Yeah, loved that taunting. Was, you, him that was with your the fact. favorite stat, just like my favorite. Nine hundred ninety-seven. Yeah, he'd been never been over a thousand. Yeah, because but, he did stink. Yes, he doesn't stink. He's but that's he what the reception like, perception profile showed is he became a great player. I fully yes. acknowledge I was dead wrong with the player he became. Yeah, it it was hard. It was difficult to see this path unfold after his first couple years in the league. But to me, the way it goes right is that is that the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers gets back on track. The It was a crazy year last year for Aaron Rodgers. The way I talked about David Johnson wasn't getting used in the 10 zone, Aaron Rodgers was not throwing the the way that he has statistically has inside of the red zone. You're talking uh, compared to the previous four years, he threw the ball about 40 times fewer in the red zone, which that's insane. That, that's a massive drop. For Aaron Rodgers, so the way that things go, go that uh, go the way they should for Adams, or even better, Rodgers gets back on track, and the rest of the crew, the rest of the Green Bay Packers wide receiver, finally start pulling their weight. And it's not just Devonta Adams; it's they turn into the number one scoring offense in the league, and Adams 
hits that 15 touchdown mark. Yeah, the nice thing about Adams, Andy brought it up at the beginning, it's his consistency. A lot of people won championships with Devontae Adams last year because week in, week out, he was reliable. Yeah. And when you have Aaron Rodgers, number one wide receiver, look back over time, whether it's Devontae Adams or Jordy Nelson or Donald Driver. Greg Jennings. The, the number one wide receiver for Aaron Rodgers is a must-have asset in fantasy football. You want to make him the number one wide receiver? Great. Do it. How's it going to go wrong for Devontae Adams? I mean, it would take an epic collapse. It would take uh, something of uh, an injury. I mean, I I can't he's imagine. As, he's as safe as they come into position. Yeah. Because he doesn't have a history of injury like well, the next guy. He has his concussion history, if if you recall. He's taken a a few big shots to the head where if, if he suffered another concussion this year, then he could be missing some major time. All right, let's move on. Number seven. All right, another wide receiver. We're higher on this player than the consensus. Julio Jones, Atlanta Falcons wide receiver. All he's done over the last five years is finish eighth, second, sixth, fourth, and fifth at the position. Julio found his way into the end zone over the back half of the year. His average draft position is at 112 right now. Um, last season, 113 receptions, 1,677 yards, eight touchdowns on 170 targets. We know who he is at this point in his career. To me, that's still a player that if the if the touchdown, uh, if the ball falls the right way, if the thing things go the right way for him, he's still in the category of of finishing at number one at the position. Uh, right now, fantasy owners like Devontae Adams a lot more than Julio Jones. If you look at high stakes leagues, Jones is going 12, 13. He's going anywhere between the sixth off the board to 21, whereas Adams is higher. Why do we have him higher than Adams? What, what's the argument for that? I don't know. You tell me. Well, I guess I will. <laughs> I will tell you that. I will say this. I think that what you saw over the back half of the year, like Julio's too talented to not get in the end zone. I like the fact that the Atlanta offense has predictable pieces to it. Uh, an underrated quarterback in Matt Ryan, a quarterback that – this year, I brought this up on a radio show the other day. They play an inordinate amount of games inside of domes where Matt Ryan has been yes. exceptionally better. Obviously, the home games are all there, but his away games happen to be in domes this year. He's guaranteed for 1,500 yards. So does he score six, seven, eight, nine times, or does he continue to have those problems? Jason, where do you sit in this? Because I know that I've been very bullish on Julio. I am certainly not as bullish as you are, but the, the process – from a fantasy football analysis side is strong to say, look, first of all, this guy is always, always a top 10 wide receiver in fantasy, usually a top five wide receiver. That's for a guy who doesn't usually score touchdowns. He's going to be at or near the league lead in receptions and in yardage. So it's like, okay, he's got the safest baseline that we know what we're getting you know, if, if Devontae Adams doesn't happen to get the double-digit touchdowns, which I do think he's got a higher higher odds to get, you know, than Julio, significantly certainly. more touchdowns yeah. than Julio, but touchdowns are the least sticky of all fantasy football stats. From year to year, guys who have great touchdown rates can disappear. We saw that with Jordy once when he went from 15 down to 7. But if Julio, who you're pretty much just expecting five or six touchdowns from on a season – if he ends up with 10, which he has done in the past, he's the number one wide receiver. So I think it's just a matter of uh, when it comes to the, the safe play, volume over touchdowns, but I love both players. All right, uh, let's move on to uh, a guy ranked much higher in pretty much every format. Number six. DeAndre Hopkins, wide receiver, Houston Texans. 2017, number one overall. Last year, number two overall at the position. He's the only wide receiver in high stakes leagues that even has gone at number one overall. Um, Hopkins last year was a monster. 11 touchdowns, 163 targets, 1,500 plus yards, 115 receptions. He's led the league in target share two consecutive seasons. His average draft position is 107. How it goes right. He just does what Status he does. He quo, just does what sure. he does, right? What what is a an argument for Hopkins having a below Hopkins standard type of season? I mean, the only thing that I can come up with is that 
Kiki QT and Will Fuller actually stay on the field and Deshaun Watson doesn't feel it's fully necessary to feed everything over to DeAndre Hopkins. Mike Clay had tweeted out the in games where QT played five full games, QT had 50 targets and Hopkins had 47. Now that's that that's not to say QT different targets, it, but yeah, yeah. Hopkins is still the by far the more valuable wide receiver. But what it's saying is there are players, there could be wide receivers on this team this year that are actually worth a target from Deshaun Watson, where that's it's been rough sledding when Will Fuller was not on the field for, for them to find someone. I mean, they, they traded they they threw a Hail Mary and they traded oh, yeah. for Demarius Thomas halfway through the year because they said we need somebody, so anyone who can come in and catch passes. Who's not gonna get injured. Yeah, then well man, oh, that man. didn't work out. No. What is it? But so that's how it goes. That's how Hopkins goes from number one to number three or number right. four. I mean, right. he's, even if, if it, this catastrophic, he's unguardable cataclysm I've in, introduced, I've made up, I've fabricated. You can't, he's still top. You five. can't double him. Right. Oh, you can double him, but he's still going to come down with the ball. <laughs> I saw Aqib Talib the other day. Uh, they went rapid fire questions with him, cornerback for the Rams, best hands in the game. D Hop. Yep. DeAndre Hopkins. Makes sense. He's done it over and over again. Finds a way to get into the end zone on some ridiculous catches. Hopkins is like taking Julio Jones and Devontae Adams and kind of putting them together because you've got the yardage and the PPR monstrosity Fair. of Julio, but you've got the touchdown capability and, and history with Hopkins. So I think that's why Hopkins universally is usually seen as the number one wide receiver. Uh, before we jump into the top five, percentage chance Hopkins ends the year the number one overall fantasy wide receiver in your mind, Mike? I will go 30%. Oh, wow. Okay. I will go 13%. All right. I was I was going to say it's probably 50%. Because well, you, he's your number one guy. He's not number one for us. All well, right. and the thing is, is, is not a disrespect for Hopkins so much as I think that there's – I think Juju could. I think uh, Julio could. I think Adams. Devontae Adams could. I mean, there, there's competition there. And obviously, yeah. Okay, let's move on. Number five. All right, Melvin Gordon comes in at number five, running back for the Chargers. Uh, he's got a risk rating of four in our ultimate draft kit. The last three years finished seventh, fifth, and seventh. Only played 16 games one time in that span. That's why the risk rating is up a little bit. He's been banged up. He's played hurt, so he's played through injury, and then he's missed some games. Played 12 last year, 10 touchdowns, 50 receptions. 175 carries. Uh, monster efficiency improvements over his career, Mike? Yeah, it, he has gotten a lot better. Uh, I mean, this was the, actually, shockingly, if you didn't realize this, this was the first year that Melvin Gordon had has finished over that arbitrary 4.0 yards per carry. He was, he's was he been a 3.9 type of guy, and this year it was over 5, which to me says it's not – just that Gordon has gotten better, but the the Chargers offense as a whole is is very deadly. And Melvin Gordon gets the the Todd Gurley workload that, that fantasy players want. It just didn't feel like it by the end of the year because he only played the twelve games and Todd Gurley happened to finish with a couple more. But he is he is absolutely fantasy gold. I mean, nine point eight yards per reception has a year with ten point two yards per reception. He's he's a big play guy. He does it through the air and on the ground, and is a touchdown mach machine. What do we got? Twenty eight touchdowns the past three years, only playing one full season. Well, the nice thing is, is when he was actually on the field last year, you didn't have to worry about him. Right. He never busted. He had one game where he was in that kind of meh category, but he didn't kill you on the week. He did not have a pure bust week. His efficiency is through the roof. He has to stay healthy. Uh, I think we know all the good things about him, but do you worry about, you know, some people out there, they they believe the workload, you know, needs to be needs to be reined in and Austin Eckler needs to get more work or Justin Jackson who had a chance at the end of the year. Maybe Phillip Rivers starts to show his age and this team regresses a little bit and so his passing game upside, goal right. line upside goes down doesn't seem like this is the year we're going to be disappointed in Melvin Gordon. Not to me. And it doesn't matter if we, as the general public, believe that his workload should go down because he keeps getting hurt. It matters what the team thinks. And 
He wants to be out there. I think that the team is still going to rely heavily on Melvin Gordon in that level of workload, but he's he's behind some other running backs because of those reasons of of the injury and the risk concerns. Yeah, if it wasn't for injury, I mean, you've got a team that is so like you know the the thing about fantasy is whenever a team makes big splashy moves, they get the publicity, they get the press, they get the excitement, the unknown. But it's usually the teams that stay the same. No coaching turnover, no playbook turnover, no huge you know changes on the offense. That's the Chargers where they take a step forward as an offense. And last year in the games that he was playing, look, there were only two players who outscored him on a per-game basis, Todd Gurley and Saquon. That's it. That's how good he was. He was in that category on a per-game. He was one of those very few guys where it was like you got two players in one position in your right. fantasy lineup week in and week out. I think if they bring his carries down two or three carries a game, and I can get 16 games? Like, that's a good sign sure. me up. I think the Devontae Adams, Melvin Gordon career comps are probably worth looking at where that distrust sometimes – I mean, Adams has moved past it now. But there's, a like, an underrated nature to Gordon and Adams, or was, because of the fact that they weren't great players to be – I mean, his efficiency went from, what, 3.1 a carry in his first few years to – He was 3.5, 3.9, 3.9, 5.1. Yeah, so it, the perception doesn't match the reality. I, like I didn't realize how good he was on a per game basis until you said that. Jason. He will never be in the fours. He's either in the threes or the fives <laughs> yeah. per carry. Number four. All right, number four coming in. Alvin Kamara. You say Kamara, I say Kamara. Kamara. <laughs> I say super Camario. Yes. Uh, last season, number four overall at the position. 2017, he was number three. This is a player who does not need 220-plus carries to be a top guy. A running back target last year in a half-point league. It's worth almost double that of a rushing attempt. 1.88 times the value of one rushing attempt. Players that can get the kind of receiving yardage that Alvin Kamara has – 81 receptions, 709 receiving yards, four touchdowns through the air. It changes the equation for them. I love Kamara this year. I think his opportunity is greater than he even was last year. A lot of people want to talk about Latavius Murray as a value. Seventh round draft pick. Let's talk about this backfield. Kamara is a guy that can finish number one overall this season. I, I completely agree. I mean, you look at... Uh, three of the first four weeks last year when they didn't have Mark Ingram, Kamara finished as the number one back. He is electric. I remember watching the first game of last year because I was I was a little bit worried about the volume of Kamara and whether or not he could stay that efficient. And my biggest takeaway from last year, week one, when watching the games on Sunday, I went, oh, he's just too good. Yeah. He's just – you go back and watch film and you go, okay, you see him coming around an edge – there's three defenders, one blocker. There's he's at the 12 yard line. There's he, maybe he'll get two yards, and 13 yards later he's in the end zone celebrating a touchdown because guys can't touch him. He is exceptional. He's on one of the best offenses out there, and I agree with you, Andy. The opportunity is better this year than last year. While I think Latavius Murray is involved, the Saints do not run a workhorse back system. Never have, never will. Latavius Murray is less than. Mark Ingram, so I, you know, I think that uh, Alvin Kamara is is every bit deserving of. If you want to draft him at the number one spot, you can. He's certainly in that conversation with the other three guys that are ahead of him on this list. If there's a team, like we talk about the the sticky nature of touchdowns, it doesn't matter who you are. Go back to Sean McCoy's great years. Oh man, twenty the twenty touchdowns one year drops down to right. seven. It if you want to pick a team where it's the most predictable possible. The Saints just run the ball into the end zone. This is what they do. Last season, they led the NFL in rushing touchdowns. Kamara's going to get himself into the end zone, and I don't think that they're going to abandon what he offers around the goal line just to get Latavius Murray in the game. There's not a lot of risk to me. I agree. For Alvin Kamara. Um, do you want, as the Kamara owner, do you view Murray as a handcuff? Or is he a handcuff? I, I think he's more of a handcuff because yeah, I agree. you know if 
if Alvin Kamara were to go down, I don't the the it's like we said, it's it's not it's not the the methodology of Sean Payton to say, I want a workhorse back. They'll have someone else. Javorius Allen will then take over you know, that role if he's on the name roster. I thought we would never have to say again. <laughs> Bob that stops point. here. They'll find someone, and they will split the load. And if you were splitting the load, then I'm not in love with Latavius Murray as a handcuff. But I do think he's a value in general because you'll be able to play him as a flex, as a lower-tier player, even when Kamara is healthy. All right, let's move on. Number three. Christian McCaffrey comes in at number three. Man, what a year for Christian McCaffrey. His rookie season finished 11th at the position, despite not really doing much on the ground. Last season, number three at the position, 219 carries, over 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns on the ground. Oh, and then uh, I'm going to catch 107 passes for 867 yards and six touchdowns on 124 targets. Can he maintain that high of a workload? Can those biceps handle <sighs> that kind of workload and stay healthy? They're big. Them, them biceps, biceps are big from what I've been seeing. Oh, they're looking good. <laughs> yeah, he's he not, missed he... no snaps, zero snaps in four games last year, where he never even came off the field. Yeah, he made that's insane. He made Greg Olson feel bad for how often <laughs> Greg Olson was on the field. He's like, man, I wish I could be on the field as much as Christian McCaffrey. I mean, thirty total missed snaps, <laughs> thirty on the season. He is, uh, you know, we, I, we talked about this ad nauseum last year. Norv Turner has a workhorse back. The, uh, the opposite well, of the to Sean your credit, Payton. you talked about it ad nauseum. Yeah, yeah and, and, you know, sometimes you can't really. How are you not? How is that not a toot toot for no, Jason? No, he just, he just took it, man. Just let him have it. Yeah. Just, I he will, was being I will modest. I'm, I'm, are He's, you okay? No, he's not well. Like the fact that you're Look. talking about something you got right and you're not stopping the show. It's halt it's, the recording. It's just become it's just become one of those things. If he where pulled if a I, plaque out from under his desk right now. If I were going to stop he the already show, had it pre printed. Every time I got something right, the show oh, would never go on. Thank you. There he's back. So <laughs> there but, it is. But you know, with the with the history you have, it's funny because at the end of this year, with how much Christian McCaffrey was used, I thought to myself this man's they, going to die. They have to like not not an option. They have to lower his volume. And then as the offseason has gone on, I go, no, then why? Then if, North Turner's not no. going to do that. Like they are going to run him into the ground. And I, I think he can handle it because this isn't like out of nowhere in college. He no, was it's a, not. He was a workhorse back, twenty two years old. He's he's going to be able to handle it. He's going to get the workload. He's game script proof because of his passing work. I mean, it's just a matter of how many rushing touchdowns can he get. If he gets a lot, he's in the top three. If he ends up having, you know, six or seven on the season, he's in the top ten. Uh, correction, by the way, he's 23 years old, not 22 years old. Uh, I like that I wrote in the show doc uh, how it goes right, and Kyle, our editor-in-chief, wrote in, he, no explanation for how it goes right, just says he's a PPR demigod. Yes, he's very just, fair. Because it's true. As far as it going wrong, I barring injury is not going to. Yeah, I I completely agree. And it, if even if the Panthers, they come out and they're saying we're we're gonna cut back on his Liar. workload. What have they done this off season besides bring back the the mysterious age of Cameron Artis Payne? Yeah, they added uh, Jordan Scarlett in the fifth round, and yeah. and then uh, that's it. <laughs> I mean, well, and they invested a top. I mean, 10 they, they have Elijah Holyfield as an undrafted free agent, but yeah, they, they've done really nothing. They're going to use him up. Yes, they put a top ten pick on a running back. He did everything you could ever want from a running back. They're going to keep doing it. If you wanted to look at a player, you know, look at what we got from Gurley. That kind of like super performance for a few year window. We're in that window for Christian McCaffrey. I agree. Number two. All right, number two is Ezekiel Elliott now free. From the shackles of potential suspension. For now. <laughs> oh, it's Look, sad man, you... but true. <laughs> 15 games, 300 carries, 1,400 yards, six touchdowns, which is a low number on the ground. That could come up. 77 receptions. That is the breakthrough total for Zeke. You know, he's always been great, but he hadn't been utilized in the passing game to the degree that he was after Amari Cooper arrived before Amari Cooper, five targets per game, 28 receiving yards per game. After Amari Cooper, all of a sudden, 
the offense, whatever happened, 6.3 targets per game, 42 receiving yards per game. I mean, Zeke, Zeke is unstoppable. Look, the yes. second half of the year, when Amari Cooper got there and this new offense that, that performed well was there, Zeke was on pace for 118 targets. Christian McCaffrey had 124 targets. Christian McCaffrey had six more targets in that pace. Zeke became a PPR guy, and he is, I believe, the best running back in the NFL. I think if you're just talking on the ground, running game, Zeke is the guy who I would – over Saquon, over DJ, over Gurley, Zeke is unbelievably talented. If he gets the workload in the running game, which you know he's going to get, and now they involve him in the passing game, he's had – he's always been a touchdown guy. Like, yeah. he had six touchdowns last year. Is very disappointing in that department. Still had a great season. But if he were to put both together, the passing game and the touchdown game, you want to talk about a Todd Gurley level, you know, a completely unfair advantage. That's why Zeke is my number one running back this year. I was only worried about the possibility of the suspension. That has been ruled out. I'm, I'm full steam ahead. The only thing that I will say about Zeke is that if you're in a PPR format, Zeke's going to be drafted ahead of McCaffrey, Kamara, Mo maybe. More often than not yeah, so maybe. In, in those formats. If it was a mirage, I mean, that's a small sample. Yes. You look at Kamara, you look at McCaffrey, you know, and, and David Johnson. You know, you know those guys, the fluidity in the passing game. You've seen it over a long stretch of time. We haven't seen it over a long stretch for Zeke. So that could, you know, in a PPR league, could he finish four, five? Yes, he could. But if his if if we're seeing a trend of success in the passing yes, game, you're, he he should be the number one or two guy. You're a hundred percent right that the sample is too small to bank on. But if you take that sample out and look at his rookie year when he was the number two running back and wasn't a pass catcher, or last year or the the year before last when he was the number ten running back and only played in ten games, so he, okay, he doesn't get the pass catching work. It was a mirage. And I hadn't even heard of him before this maybe. show. This is a breakthrough <laughs> type of you know. It's like at that point, it's like oh, I'm disappointed. Now he's Brooks. The number, why didn't you tell me about number him? Number three running back. You're Zeke, a Dallas fan. Zeke led the uh, the league in rushing last year. He led his rookie year and all three years he has led the league in rushing yards per game. The, the targets, just to get a, a better picture of how crazy it was, 95 targets. That's fifth at the position. That's four fewer targets than Alvin Kamara. Super Camario, the pass catching All running back. quietly. Man. And here's what happens with touchdowns on the ground. His rookie year, he had a rushing touchdown every 21 and a half attempts. The next year, he had a rushing touchdown every 34 attempts. Last year, every 50 attempts, he had a rushing touchdown, which is that – doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Statistically, that is the outlier to me, and I think that Zeke bounces back and, and if – yeah, man, if the, that receiving work is still given to him this year, it's I it will think be it's, a spectacle. I think it's close to impossible that he's not the number one running back. Mm. Number one. Saquon has something to say about that. Saquon That's, Barkley. Because it's still an if, if yeah. Zeke gets it. Saquon, Saquon comes Saquon in will. at number one on our top ten on today's show. He is the number one overall by average draft position right now. If you look at high stakes leagues, he is number one overall. McCaffrey number two, by the way, in uh, NFFC. Yep. Um, no, very low risk with a player that receives 121 targets, 91 receptions, 700 plus passing uh, or receiving yards, four touchdowns through the air. Last season, rookie season, did everything and more that you could ever want from Saquon Barkley. Fourth player ever with 2,000 scrimmage yards. 90 catches, and 1,300 rushing yards. People want to find a reason to fade him because of the kind of bitter beer face you get when you think of the Giants, mm -hmm. uh, which is easy to do. You think of the team, you think of the offense, you think of no Odell Beckham Jr., and you think of what happens to offenses when there's quarterback controversy or a young quarterback comes in, and it's kind of a look-away situation, right? Yeah, I mean, that's... That's definitely a legitimate fear, and I. This is why he's. I mean, we're we're uh, you know picking fights here, but he's my number two. Ugh, he's not my number gross. one. How dare me? Um, <laughs> How dare me? 
But, you know, the, there are concerns because the offense is bad. If they were to go away from Eli, amazingly, I think it would still be bad for the team in the short term. Maybe that's wrong. But no, I, Odell, think, I think you're 100% right. But Odell Beckham being out makes a huge difference. We've already seen it, right? Odell Beckham missed several games last year. We're talking five fewer fantasy points per game for Saquon in those games that Odell Be Beckham missed. So, you know, it, look, if – if he's not moving the chains and Golden Tate probably not just picking up the slack, it's he'll fewer. pick up some of it though, he'll right? Those are unexpected misses. You didn't have Tate around. Yeah, he'll he'll pick up a little. But if you you know if he misses three or four fantasy points game and you're comparing it because if, if you want Zeke, you better take him with that number one spot. So I mean, really, when we're talking right now, this player, we're only talking to the people who are at the number one pick, and they can pick anyone in the league. Who are you going to go with? Personally, I'm going to go with Zeke. I think to speak briefly about your point about Eli versus Daniel Jones, I will say this on record. It will be worse with Daniel Jones. It will not be a better situation. Eli Manning and all of his problems and all of his issues last year, 4,200 passing yards, multiple 300-yard games throughout the season. That's not what you're going to get with Daniel Jones. It's not I, like right. Daniel Jones has the potential to say maybe he checks down more. No, like, right. No, it's like, impossible. We so, already know Eli's going to throw the ball every single time that a guy gets in his face to Saquon. Yeah, and, and you've seen a season with Saquon succeeding on a losing team with Eli. So if the if the season's going bad, now the problem is if it goes that bad, Daniel Jones probably will take the field, which could be an argument in favor of McCaffrey or Zeke or Kamara. Right. And for that variable, the, even the if own, it's a uh, little bit of a consistency problem. The one spot of how can things go wrong for me for Barkley, it just have, it comes down to his breakaway percentage and the, the his elusive how elusive he is isn't going to go away. But I mean, he was he was tops of the league, tops for running backs when it comes to his breakaway percentage and these huge runs that turn into ESPN top ten highlights because it's a it's a fifty yard touchdown run. If those come down, which I do expect them to come down a bit, but if they come down too much. That's just where you end up disappointed <laughs> with Barkley. I'm looking at his game log. Uh, these are separate games. Long of 68, long of 78, long of 51, yep. long of 50. Yep. Long of 68. Wow. Yeah, look. The and thing is, I think he could probably do it for a couple more years he, the way AP he, would do that yes. for a few years. And that, that's why I'm saying I'm not fading him at all. But if, if there's a place where you're disappointed because you took him number one and he ends up as the number six, the number seven running back, that's the area of the game that I see that doesn't hold Do up. Do you think that the reason he has such great breakaway potential is because they're they're like challenging him to run the ball? So the whole yes. defense is yes. up at the line. 100%. And if he breaks through, there's no one deep it's, worried about the deep game. Yeah, it's and you're, the safety blitz, man. Well, if you run that on Madden and you, you bring everyone in and the running back just happens to stay up and oh, here's a free 50 yard touchdown he's also going to continue to have big plays in the screen game the way Gurley yes. did in Los Angeles he's also very fast he's a really good player and strong he's and he's quadriceps are bigger than my <laughs> entire body so to run it back number 10 Todd Gurley number nine David Johnson number eight Devontae Adams number seven Julio touchdown Jones <laughs> Number six, DeAndre Hopkins. That's, that's our best nickname of all time. Number, yeah, it's so innovative. <laughs> Number five, Melvin Gordon. <laughs> Number four, Alvin Kamara. Number three, Christian McCaffrey. Number two, Ezekiel Elliott. And number one, Saquon Barkley. But, oh, gosh, but he, really? <laughs> I was rapping but here, what? voice of public opinion. But, but where's Pat Mahomes? Uh, this wasn't a top 10 quarterback countdown. Yeah, that's Voice a good public point. Opinion. Um, get out of here, quarterback drafter. Did you get some Tyreek Tyreek news you wanted to bring to the table? No. Is that, okay, <laughs> all right. Well, before we shut things down, let's do this. Pristine deal of the day. All right, it's a player not in our top 10, but yesterday on pristineauction.com, he signed Le'Veon Bell jersey. A Jets jersey, oh. $73.71 purchased by Adam Gaze. Oh, no, wait, that was not <laughs> Adam Gaze. But every single day, we always bring you like a deal of the day. There are hundreds that sell each and every day at pristineauction.com, and if you use the registration code BALLERS, Ballers. on sign-up, you get five bucks towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. 
You can sign up. It's free to sign up. Ballers. It's free to bid. You only you only pay if you win. So make a bid on an item. If you say, oh, I want to see if I can snag this for 40 bucks. I wish that worked, worked with Fantasy League buy-ins. Like, I only pay if I win. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, that's a good return. Let's talk auction that about would, that. It would not work very well for the fantasy payouts. Nah, that's true. I mean, look, you can do that. Because, I just get 10 bucks back. Yeah, you're like, it's a $20 league, and I put in 20 Ah, oh, I man. won 20 Thank you for tuning in, Fookland. We will see you <laughs> next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.